Naming Compounds, Chapter 5. Let's start with the law of constant composition. And what this says is that the ratio of elements in a compound is fixed. So imagine I had here a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. And I could have any proportion. I could have a lot of oxygen or I could have a lot of hydrogen, but it can be any proportion since it's a mixture. But if I had water, it has to be in the ratio of H2O, two hydrogens for every water. And that's um, what the fixed ratio is. So water is a compound. I can't have any ratio I want. It has to be two hydrogens to one oxygen to make water. So let's watch this video here. I don't know if I can play the video. Well, you can watch it in the um, in the regular PowerPoint, but it shows um, making water. So the chemical formula tells you the ratio of the atoms. So when you see H2O, that means two hydrogens to one oxygen. The subscripts tell you how many of each element. The, the one subscript is omitted. If you don't see a number, that means one. If the subscript is different, the compound is different. For example, CO is carbon monoxide. CO2 is carbon dioxide. They're very different. So both compounds exist, but they're totally different compounds. If you have a metal in the compound, you write it first. So it's NaCl, not the reverse. So the metal always comes first. And sometimes there's several groups of the same kind that are present, and their formulas are set off by parentheses. So you can see that in this formula, we have NO3 parentheses 2. That means we have two groups of NO3. So let's look at this MgNO3 2 formula and um, how many of each atom. So magnesium, Mg, there's just one of those. N, there's one, but the two outside the parentheses applies to the nitrogen. So there's two nitrogens. And the oxygen, there's three in each group, two groups. So we have six oxygens. So that's what the formulas mean. When we talked about the classifications of substances, remember that pure substances could be elements or they could be compounds. And we're going to break that down a little bit further, that elements can be atomic or molecular. So many of the elements exist just as individual atoms. An example is neon. It exists as individual neon atoms. But uh, some of them exist in pairs. So like oxygen doesn't exist by itself. O floating around alone doesn't happen. But when it's just oxygen, it's going to find another oxygen and be O2. And that's what makes it molecular. It's not a compound because it has all the same atom. So it's still an element, but it's a molecule because it's more than one atom bonded together. Compounds can also be broken into two categories. We'll have mole molecular and ionic. So an example of molecular is water, H2O. An example of ionic is salt sodium chloride. And so we're going to talk about the differences between those types of compounds as well. So starting with the elements. So in the elemental state, some elements are diatomic, meaning two together. And we talked about that with oxygen. There's actually seven of them, and they make a seven on the periodic table. So that's kind of handy. So it's nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Of course, that's just six. The other one is also hydrogen. So the reason that's important is when you see one of those in a reaction, oxygen, hydrogen, it's not going to be just H or just O. It's going to be with a two subscript. But in a compound, it doesn't have to be a two. Just like with H2O, the hydrogen is two, but the O is not. That's OK, because it's in a compound. But O by itself is going to be O2. So looking now at the compounds, we have ionic and molecular. So let's look at what are the differences there. An ionic compound is a metal 
and a nonmetal together. And we end up calling those ions, we've got the cation that's positive and the anion that's negative. And we think of it not so much as a molecule as a formula unit because it's, it's this crystal structure and you don't have an individual sodium and chloride. What you have is every sodium surrounded by chloride and every chloride surrounded by sodium. And so we think of it as the formula unit, the simplest unit, is NaCl, but they really don't exist as individual NaCl. So that's ionic. Molecular are different. They're all nonmetals. So this carbon dioxide is an example. Carbon and oxygen are both nonmetals. Um, the basic unit is a molecule, and you can see that, that the CO2 exists each one individually. Even though it's a solid and they're all close together, the CO2 is a unit, and that's the molecule.